Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I'm working on um, building a new bridge computer, a bridge PC. Uh, basically a computer that um, is not exactly modern tech but it's not ancient tech and it's a way to um, transfer files like off the internet and actually get them onto some old media so we can use them on um, some of the older computers. Now for a long long time I've used um, I've used this as um, my bridge, uh, my bridge computer. Some people like to call them tweeners. I think it's not a bad name for them, really, a tweener. Uh, but for a long time, I've used this. It's a um, about 1999 um, Packard Bell laptop, and um, it's quite a nice thing, actually. This. It was designed for uh, Windows ME but I have it running um, Windows 98 booting into DOS and um, basically if I need to um, make all three and a half inch discs for um, older systems uh, this is what I uh, generally speaking um, do it on um, it's got a few bits and bats of programs I mainly use it for PC stuff um, to be fair um, because it's it's only running DOS and um, Windows 98, some of the file transfer programs that have come out in later years won't run on that. I am a bit reluctant to upgrade it. It would just about run XP. This um, it's got a K6. Um, I think it's got a K6 2450 um, CPU and it's got 90 odd meg of RAM in it. So um, it, it would just about run um, XP, uh, it wouldn't run it brilliantly but it would run it. Um, so I could upgrade it that way um, and run some of the later software, some like the um, Omniflop and um, things like that, um, CPC Disk XP, um, there's one for the Atari as well. Um, but it would mean I'd have to put um, a later operating system on it, I could put Windows 2000 on it. I was trying actually the other night to get this thing to dual boot between 98 and 2000 and I couldn't get it to work. Um, I couldn't get 2000 to install correctly on it so I'm probably going to have to wipe it and start all over again with this because I've buggered the installation up on it. But I, what I mainly use this for uh, actually is DOS gaming. Um, it's a brilliant DOS gaming laptop. It's got a... Um, OPL um, chipset so out audio on it, so it's got proper MS-DOS drivers, um, Sound Blaster Pro compatible, I think. Uh, it's got a decent um, TFT screen. Uh, it's got a really, really nice TFT screen on it. You don't get any lag on it or anything, no um, smearing. And with the 450 processor in it and plenty of RAM, it, I mean, Quake 2, um, Quake 2, um, it'll play any of the games before that, you know, um, Quake, Doom, Duke 3D, anything like that is absolutely perfect for. So rather than compromise it, I've decided I'm going to actually just keep it for that purpose as an MS-DOS um, gaming laptop basically. And I'm going to build myself a um, decent little bridge PC um, to basically use for that purpose and solely for that purpose. So we'll get that out of the way. <coughs> and what I was thinking, I've got a really nice little PC in mind. It, well, I was actually only thinking about using the case of it, but um, now I've looked into the motherboard and everything in it, I've decided I'm going to use it pretty much as is. But we'll come to that later. Um, at the moment, it's set up with a uh, just a hard drive. Um, when I got it, it just had um, a hard drive and a CD-ROM drive, and it didn't have any floppy drives or anything like that. I've, put a three and a half inch floppy drive in there because there was a space that there was a free bay for it and that got me thinking what's more use in that computer um, a CD-ROM drive or a five and a quarter inch um, floppy drive so I started having a hump round in the um, attic and found this uh, I was actually looking for a um, 360k um, five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Uh, what I've found actually is a 1.2 meg um, five and a quarter inch floppy. Now I don't know whether this is going to work out as well as um, I want. 
I might end up actually in the build I don't know yet I might end up swapping this drive out for um, one that I've got in um, one of my 486's at the moment which is um, a 360 a 360k drive for the simple fact you can have some problems writing 360k discs on um, 1.2 meg drives but that said I don't know whether it's going to open up more possibilities for perhaps some of the other weirder formats uh, using Omniflop and stuff like that actually having a 1.2 meg drive and I found out I think this drive is quite configurable um, I can't find a manual for it uh, it's a um, it's a Mitsubishi and it's an MF um, 504C 318 UG, if that means anything to anyone. I did look it up online and all it told me was it's a 1.2 meg um, high density um, 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive. And in fact, someone scrawled 1.2 question mark and OK on the top of it. Kind of, yeah, uh, I think that's pretty. Uh, pretty um, indicative of what it is. What is nice about it, it is very very configurable, I was mentioning it. Um, you can set just about everything um, through jumpers, you can set the uh, drive selects from um, DS0 right up to DS2 on some jumpers here. I believe you can even um, change the uh, motor speed using jumpers on it, although like I said, without the manual I'm not sure how to do that. And I believe you can also force it to uh, work as a double density drive by swapping some jumpers out and actually forcing it in as a to work as a proper double density drive. So the uh, I don't in that instance I don't think the head will do the double step in, which is what the problem is when you're trying to write three sixty k floppies on a one point two meg drive. The head has to do like this double step in, and you can read three sixty k floppy drives wrote on a proper 360k drive fine on these um, you can write 1.2 meg um, disk obviously fine the problem comes you can write a 360k drive, um, disk and read it back on the drive and it'll work fine but you sometimes have issues writing it and then reading it back on a proper 360k drive so at the moment I'm not sure but it's the drive I've got out at the moment so um, and it needs some TLC um, so we'll go with it for now, we'll get it actually installed and working in the computer and then we'll think perhaps maybe later whether we want to swap it out for a 360. Um, but it's no use as it is because it's, um, it's not exactly in A1 condition, it's obviously spent some time um, in storage, it's been up in my attic for years and it came from a, um, a big job lot of um, computer stuff I bought some years ago. Um, so I th and that was from an estate sale so um, it probably spent some time not used before I got hold of it and basically it's the grease in it is seriously gummed up I mean if you just touch in there where the um, worm drive is for the heads and try moving the heads it's just a horrible sticky sticky grease um, it's dirty um, it's full of fluff so what I thought we'd do first is um, we'll give this drive a bit of a clean up and then I'll um, I'll drag in the the PC that I'm um, planning to put this in. I might even put it in there and we can have a look at the whole PC as a whole. The reason I'm doing it in here is that the um, PC is currently spread all over my other bench so I didn't have anywhere to um, work on this drive. Um, so I thought I'd come in here do this do this part of the video and clean it up and then we'll um, will bring the PC, the PC is going to live in here I was initially going to have it in my other room but the monitor that I use as a test monitor um, I found out won't um, work on VGA uh, anything above um, 640 by 480 and the minimum XP will do is 800 by 600 so I could swap the monitor out but I thought I've got a monitor which is capable already in here I have all my other like office type computers in here I'm, it might as well come and live in here um, it might even evolve slightly into a little bit of a um, retro gaming computer as well like I was using the other one I don't know about that yet I've got ideas uh, it's a little bit pow more powerful than what we'd really need for that and we'd have to figure out a way of dual booting it between perhaps DOS and um, the XP uh, installation anyway let's get on with um, having a look at this floppy drive 
I've got all my favourite um, things we need for here. So we've got some Q-tips. I've got some um, isoprop. I've got the spray grease and a few cocktail sticks and some um, some screwdrivers to help us um, get in there. It really is rather um, rather grim and uh, rather um, icky. I don't know how it has quite got this icky because when I got it, um, it was actually in a in a rather manky um, metal driving closure like that. It's um, rather grim. So that's how it kept, how it was when I got it. So you see, it's not exactly been kept in um, kept in peak condition or anything like that. But we can uh, let's, uh, let's get in there and um, see what we can do. I'm going to try taking this board off um, first for the for the simple reason I can see how dirty it is underneath there, and it'd be a lot easier to clean if we can uh, lift that board out of place. And unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be any issues with doing that on this um, on this particular drive. I think we've got plenty of room. I uh, don't think there's anything like sensors or anything actually on there. They all plug in with these um, with these little Molex connectors. So let's uh, let's get in. Let's let's take these connectors off. Let me just screwdriver to pop that one out. Out you come. That's, that's a bit tight, that one. I don't really want to pull on the wires and risk um, just breaking the wires. There we go, just tease it out really tight that, but at least we can't mess up putting them back, we know exactly where they go. Right now there's a connector on this side and I'm not, it's, I don't like these type of connectors I must, uh, I must admit. Uh, let's see if it'll slide out, if it won't we'll leave it. Oh no, it come out easy enough. It's one where the wires literally just slide into some little um, pin sockets on the um, on their edge. I'm not a big fan of them, but it came out okay. So we can get that board out of the way, and we can see how grim it is underneath. I think there's only one screw holding it. There we go. Now, I've got another screw holding it somewhere that I'm missing. Oh yes we have. It's hiding behind that capacitor. Let's take that one out. There we go. Right now hopefully we can just slide this board. There we are. I'm not going to go, oops, and the heads are connected on the bottom of it. So we'll remember which way around that goes, we've got black going that way. And we'll gently disconnect that. Okay. We've got the main board out. I'm not going to immediately suspect these um, capacitors, but we may end up going back in here. If the drive doesn't work and the drive's um, misbehaving, first port of call I think will be these um, electrolytic capacitors here. But for the moment, this is just about giving the drive a good clean before we even um, attempt to try it. Because at the moment, I wouldn't even want to put a floppy disk in it. Let's uh, turn you around and um, you can have a look at the dust bunny. You can see that. Uh, let's get you down, let's get you down. Look at that. Now that is a dust bunny. Okay. cocktail stick so we can grab him. Look at that. Right, that's that's probably by far the worst um, in there. But these these rails here, they're filthy. They're full of fluff. And they're full of like a horrible sticky hardened grease as well. So um, we'll break out the cotton buds. I'll just get you zoomed out a little bit. I'll keep you quite tight in so you can see what I'm doing. 
There we go. Um, we'll break out the cotton buds and we'll start having a, um, a bit of a clean round. What I might just quickly do is just give it a quick blow through the slot with my... Uh, Just to dis just to dislodge basically anything that was um, really bad in there. I mean, we can go in. We can go in with a um, a Q-tip. We might be able to get a Q-tip in there. It's quite tight. We might have to take the front off actually. To uh, how much hassle will getting the front off be? Let's see how easy that knob is to come off. Obviously, the plastic is also rather um, rather brittle and yellowed on this. So I don't want to go um, go too mad on it and risk um, breaking um, breaking some of the plastic. It's definitely been damp at some point. Where that dust bunny we've just removed was, I can actually see some um, oxidation to the aluminium. So the aluminium chassis. So that's where obviously that's been damp at um, damp at some point. Let's see if we can clean some of this away. Yeah. It is just going to be a case of doing lots and lots of cleaning. Let's have a go with these rails. Now in extreme cases I've actually had to completely dismantle uh, this and take the rails out and clean the rails manually like. I remember doing um, an Apple II drive um, a while back and I had to completely strip that down. Take all the rails because they were C solid. You just couldn't move them. Focusing. There we go. That's just off that one first uh, railing. I've not even, you know, fully cleaned it yet. We'll spin the drive over and we'll see what we can do with the worm drive on this side. Because it's going to be exactly the same down there. That's this is even worse. It's absolutely packed with um, rather uh, rather manky old grease. So we get in there. And we'll start. See if we can um, dissolve some of the old grease that's coming off. Have a look there. That is coming off. That's the um, sensor that say, detects when it's. Um, at track zero position. We want to try and get in there and clean that as well because that's full of fluff. Let's move the uh, head to its most forwards position and we can get into the back of the um, drive there. That's really stiff. We can see if we can clean off all this old sticky grease. We can also get in there now and clean the other part of the um, runner we couldn't get to before. That's looking better. Because the grease had basically hardened in the actual um, helix of the worm drive. And we're managing to get all that out now. It's stuck in that part there. We just get the cocktail stick in and we can perhaps... Yeah, there we are. Come out. That's looking better. Go in with a cock. If you can see it where it's stuck in the grooves, you can just go in with a cocktail stick and um, tease some of the old grease out. There we go. That's looking better. Let's see if we can get in that. Um, Clock to isolator there and see if we can clean the fluff and the gunk out of that. Doesn't actually look as bad as it first did, but oh, let's get another Q-tip. We'll get, let's give it another little wipe in there. Yeah. 
you know you're getting all right when you go back over a piece and you don't get any more crud coming on your um, on your Q-tip. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Now we've got some sensor blocks. I presume the sensors. Um, it's either a sensor or a switch around here. But again, I'm not going to do too much with them just at the moment um, not unless we actually have an appreciable um, problem with it I'm just really trying to get rid of all the all the dust and the um, muck like that which is going to cause some um, problems even got rust on the back of that motor so it's definitely definitely been a bit damp at some time I mean, if we're still having problems, we may have to address, like, take these boards off and um, address, but at the moment, we're just going to do the bare minimum, so we're just going to do some cleaning to it. We'll clean the heads, obviously, and then re-lube all the bits that need um, re-lubing. And then we can put it in the computer and actually um, give it a try. That's looking better already. Right, and I've got a scrap of... Um, a little scrap of card or a scrap of paper. Something I can um, spray a bit of grease onto and then we can transfer that to the um, to the parts of the drive. Right, let's get in there. Well, I've still got some um, moisture on that Q-tip. Let's go back in and try and get up as much dust and muck as we can. We may end up completely stripping this drive down, I don't know yet. We'll have to see. But certainly the more we can get off like this the better. You can see it's pretty pretty nasty. Let's get another like a film as well. So I wonder if this is another one that's come from someone that used to smoke. But again, it doesn't have that horrible nicotine smell to it, so I'm not sure really. There we are. Right, okay. Let's get some um, let's get some grease um, going. So I tend to use this, um, it's not like it's just a spray on grease, but obviously not spray it into the um, disk drive. I spray it, and you have to be a bit careful because it does tend to go everywhere. But I um, just spray a bit onto a um, piece of card or paper or something like that, and then use a cocktail stick to put the grease where I need it. So we'll just add a little bit. On the worm there, and a bit on that shaft. Basically, put it round the bearing and allow the bearing to do um, to draw it across. And if we move the head back in, it's a bit tricky now. I've put um, stuff all over it, but there we are. Basically move the head back down and we can get back in. That's easy, you're moving it on the bit that hasn't yet been there, been greased. Get a bit of grease on that. And then when the head moves backwards and forwards under its own uh, motion that'll help just spread the rest of that out. I don't want to get too much on there. There we go, and we'll put a bit on the rest of the runner on that side. Now that feels a bit stiff, we might take that off and uh, or at least see if we can perhaps just add a little bit, of, little bit of grease under there and see if we can free that off, that feels a little bit on the stiff side. But 
let's add some grease here. I think the biggest problem with this is the rails and the um, drive for the head were really gummy. And obviously that fluff in there wouldn't do us any um, favours either. We'll get a little bit, not too much. I'll just get it under there where that pivot point is. Try pushing that down. I'll just try getting a little bit in under there. There we are. Not turning. Oh yeah. So we can get a bit more in there, just see if we can get it to work in. Otherwise we'll have to take all this apart. Let's spin it again. That feels better. Okay, we've got a bit Ah, that feels better already. That's spinning quite freely now. Yeah. Right, so we've made a, yeah, we've made a difference there. The bottom motor actually feels okay. A quick look underneath. And it's quite simple with a nice big, big and big motor there. Um, can't really see anything that's going to be an issue. An issue from that side. So I think we'll give the heads a um, a little quick clean. I'm to be a bit careful um, careful with them, but I think they probably um, probably benefit from a clean, and then we can reassemble it, and we'll see whether it's going to work in the um, in the new computer. I won't use that one, I've just noticed I've got a bit of um, something on the end of that, I'll discard that one, get a new one. I mean it'd be fine for cleaning um, some crud off something, but not for um, not for cleaning the heads. Go in there. So look at that. Tiny little bit of stuff's come off, but not a lot. Try the top one. Top one's always the harder to do. Again, I can't see any. Quickly dry them. The top one. There we go. They didn't actually look um, bad at all, and if you look, I mean, there's nothing's come off. Nothing's come off on there. They don't look dirty actually. Right, so let's get the board. Um, let's get the board back on. Oh, hang on, dozy sod. I've got to connect the um, heads up first, and if you remember, I think it was black that way. That looks alright. Slide this back into position. Alright, there we go. Well, we've not done a lot of work to it, but I think it was well worth. Um, just going in and giving that um, that driver lubricate up and get it working freely before we actually attempt to test this drive, because it surely wouldn't work properly with um, the heads gummed up and not be able to move freely along their um, along their axis. And it gives us the opportunity to get some of that fluff and um, other muck and rubbish and uh, muck and rubbish out of it. Back in. That's 
quite quite tight that one. And this is oh, this is the stepper that drives the head, and it's got the wires to the um, track zero sensor on it. So let's plug that back in. There we go. That's back in, and then we've only got these. I hate these type of connectors, but hopefully these ones are going to be nice to us. The Sony on some hi-fi's um, in the 80s and 90s used to love using this type of connector. I remember coming across them and them being a pain. And actually, I remember on the hi-fi desoldering them all the connectors and just hardwiring the wires in and solved a multiple multitude of problems. But right, that's all back together. So what I'll do now is I'll um, just pause the video, I'll go and get the um, little PC that I'm um, going to, in fact I might just stick the drive in it and then um, I'll get it all set up here and I'll um, do you a quick show of the computer and uh, what it is, what it used to be, why I think it's so good for what I want to actually use it for and um, yeah, anyway I'll be back in a second we'll um, carry on with this. Okay, we're back, and uh, this is the um, this is the computer in question. Uh, basically, what it was, it was an old um, CCTV CCTV camera um, recording computer. Now, I might have shown a video about this um, a while back. Um, basically, a mate of mine wanted a couple of spare extra CCTV CCTV cameras installing on um, his installation on the cheap. So I um, I went on eBay looking for some second-hand cameras, and I found a complete setup going dirt cheap. Uh, the computer, and like five or six cameras, um, controls, everything. And I paid like twenty quid for the whole lot. Now that got him his cameras, and um, they got me this uh, this computer. Initially, I was only interested in it because it was a really nice small form factor um, shuttle PC. Um, and my initial ideas were, ooh, nice little retro gaming um, PC, small retro gaming PC. Uh, and I was initially going to change the motherboard to something um, either old, probably or older than what's in there, just a smaller um, little ITX boards I could put in there, put MS DOS on it, and um, just use it like that. But I never bothered with it. I, it got stuck under a bench. Anyway, I was looking for a computer to um, use for this uh, bridge computer, and um, I dug this out. And again, initially thinking, you know, I'll stick a, um, a different board in it. I didn't really think that the board in here would be much use for anything. It's um, it's got a two gig Celeron, um, probably like Pen I think it's Pentium Four class. I think I'm pretty certain I could pull that Celeron out of there and stick a Pentium Four processor in there. Uh, not that it really matters for this, uh, what I'm using it for, because all it really does is run uh, Windows XP. I'll just uh, get you up on the um, screen. I've got it connected to my second monitor here, but um, we'll fire it up. And I'll just show you the specs on it. Like I said, the specs are nothing um, spectacular. We've got 256 meg of RAM, um, a 2 gig seller on CPU. So obviously it's running on board graphics, on board sound. But uh, XP will run obviously very happily on it. It's perfectly acceptable for um, XP as you can see it runs fast. And I've, I've got it, you know, I don't really like the bubbliness of XP so I've just got the basic classic desktop um, installed. But I have software like this. Um, I've got um, CPC XP on here. We open that up. And what this does, this is allows you to transfer um, Amstrad CPC um, floppy disk images um, to and from the computer. You can actually connect a three-inch disk drive up to the computer if I want. If I say pulled out um, a three-inch drive, I put it where I'm going to put the five and a quarter-inch drive and read a proper disks into this and turn them into. Um, you know, a file that I could use in an emulator and vice versa I can download games off the web 
and um, use this to make them transfer them into proper um, proper desks. And I do have a uh, modified three and a half inch drive that I can plug into either my Amstrad six one two eight or my um, you can see it up here uh, my hundred twenty eight k um, plus three Spectrum there. Um, I can plug a three and a half inch drive that I've got, which has got a modified so it's got AB switch on it, various different things into the back of that, and um, load disc games straight off disc into it. So that's um, it's quite a nice, useful piece of software. We've also got um, OmniFlop, which is quite um, quite powerful. I'll get it um, running. Um, basically, this this has got many, many, many um, disc formats. This can uh, this is um, able to work with. You can write CPM discs. You can write TRS-80 discs, uh, BBC discs. Um, there's, a, like, there's an awful lot you can use um, OmniFlop for. Um, but basically, yeah, um, the only limitation with like using OmniFlop at the moment is um, we've only got um, we've only got the three and a half inch uh, disk drive there. Now this is um, it's one of the later three and a half inch disk drives as well. Another thing that makes it really useful for this computer. It's also got a um, compact flash straight on the front of the computer. So if I did want to do anything with compact flash. I mean, this computer is powerful enough to run your know, Win UAE if you want to use um, Amiga emulators to make compact flash um, disks up to perhaps run on my 600s or my 1200s. This is probably quite a good computer to um, do it with. It's powerful enough and it has the compact flash straight on the front there. Um, it's got um, smart media and other things. Most of these are completely obsolete, but the compact flash, the only reason I use this driver rather than a standard. Um, three and a half inch floppy drive is a simple fact that it has got that compact flash straight on the front which is quite um, quite handy. Anyway, I'll get this thing shut down. Let's shut down the um, we'll shut down the computer. We'll get it pulled out and I'll um, we'll have a look at replacing that CD drive there with the um, 1.2 meg, uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive, and we'll see if we can get that to. Um, we'll see if we can get that to work. One of the other, one of the nice things, one of the whole reasons I can do this, and it's not when you're looking for a computer to make like a little bridge computer, and this is you want something that can run XP, but you don't want something too new that uh, it's not going to have like a floppy drive interface on the main board. And most, in fact, most Pentium 4 class computers that I've come across, they do have, indeed, have a um, floppy drive connector on the main board still. It weren't until you started getting into like the dual cores and stuff like that that it seemed to completely um, dispense with the floppy drive connector. The problem was when, like, most of the Pentium 4 era computers, like even like this computer. All the support on in the BIOS is one uh, 1.44 meg um, floppy drive. So even if you've got the cable with the um, two ports on it, you can't really do anything because the actual um, the actual BIOS itself will only support one uh, 1.44 meg floppy drive. The awesome thing with this one is the BIOS will support two floppy drives, and it won't. Not only will it support two floppy drives. It'll support everything from a 2.88 meg um, floppy drive right down to a 360k floppy drive. So I said it does make it quite useful and quite good for the purpose I'm um, I'm putting it in. I'm not bothered about losing the um, fact that I've, um, I'm not going to have a CD drive in there anymore because it's quite a nice modern computer and it's got USB. All I've done is I've got um, I've got that external drive there. And I'll, when I've finished it all, I'll just sit that on the top of the computer. So I've still got CD support, and this is in fact a DVD writer, so it's even better than the CD writer that's um, in there at the moment. Um, so I'm not going to lose that, I'm just going to have it external, I'm going to have a more useful um, five and a quarter inch drive in, um, in there. Now this isn't as simple as taking that drive out, putting the five and a quarter in there, and we're ready to rock and roll. If it, if it was that easy, uh, yeah, because 
the way this is set, I mean, when I first started messing with the computer, it didn't have a um, floppy drive in it at all. It just had a blanking plate there. I know, originally, I wasn't going to bother putting a five and a quarter floppy drive in it. It weren't until I looked and I, it just twigged and then realised in the BIOS it actually has the um, option for you know, like 360 and two um, floppy drives. I thought it'd be daft not to. So we'll do away with the. Um, said we'll do away with the C. It's a CD writer. I so said this thing that and that is original to the computer. Um, it was used as a um, security camera a recording computer. It had uh, it had eight camera inputs to um, PCI cards in it. Actually, they're now in another computer I've built in Iraq, uh, which lives um, lives in the airing cupboard and runs my CCTV system. So um, none of it went to waste. One problem I did have with this when I was making it up was the hard drives. Uh, when I originally got this, it actually had two. Um, it only has IDE on board as well. That's another. Let's see if we can get a little bit more light from what we're doing. Um, it only has IDE on board. It doesn't have um, any um, serial ATA um, SATA connect connectors, uh, which is unusual because I think it dates from around about 2007, 2008 ish. And most computers by that time, you know, even though they still had IDE on board, they did have um, serial ATA as well. Uh, this one doesn't, it's just purely got IDE, you've just got two um, IDE channels, obviously you can take four IDE devices. And when I got it, it had that um, CD um, rewriter in it, and it had two hard drives in it. One with the, uh, which was like... Um, I think an 80 gig or something like that that had the um, OS on it and all the stuff to drive the um, cameras and then it had a second drive which was like a storage drive for the um, whatever you was recording which was um, I think 160 gig now the main drive um, I actually put in the computer that now runs my CCTV system because it had all the software on there and all the um, codes and everything I could just use it and I put a um, two terabyte um, hard drive as its um, as its uh, storage drive. So I kept the um, one sixty gig drive that was this had in it, and I tried using that format and put an XP on it and use it as the main drive, and it got halfway through its format and died. So I dug out another um, hard drive, another. Um, IDE hard drive because unfortunately you see you're stuck with IDE on this uh, 120 gig hard drive which I just had in a drawer which come out of an old system um, and I got about 80% through the farm at that time and that drive promptly died so I had to go hunting again anyway I found an 80 gig um, IDE hard drive um, a Macstar I think it's a Macstar um, which I'm not sure where it even come from but um, that format set up and works absolutely fine. So it's got an 80 gig uh, Macstar ID hard drive as its primary um, as its primary primary hard drive, and that's absolutely plenty for what we're using the computer for. Right, uh, first problem we're going to have is um, the ID. The, sorry, the floppy drive cable that I used only has one connector on it. Let's get it out of the um, case because we we're going to have to replace it. Well, basically, this floppy drive um, cable. Let's um, see if we can wind it out of the um, computer. It's very tight in here. That's is one problem. But I mean, it must have run you know for a long time, not switched off in its original um, application. So. I presume it, it's reasonably decent on um, its cooling. Anyway, that's the cable that I fitted before, and as you can see, it's only got one drive connector on it. <coughs> now, the problem I'm having, I was having, is all the drive connector cables I could find, which were two um, cables, with the newer ones, which are designed for just two um, three and a half inch, they only have that type of connector on them. And as we know, five and a quarter inch have the older edge style connector like that on them 
and I was hunting and hunting round trying to find a cable which would be suitable and in the end what I've had to do and hopefully this will work out okay is I've got one of the old ones here which has that type of connector on both ends so this is probably out of um, an early AT or even a PCXT another thing you've got to be careful of is to make sure that your twist is in the right place because if you've got a load of these or you've just bought a load um, that were going cheap um, RLL and MFM hard drive um, control cables um, basically use a very similar cable the only difference is the twists in a different place now if we look here between this cable which is the one we know works is a three and a half inch cable that we just took out and this cable we can see that the twist is indeed in the same in the same place here and we've got the same number of um, cables broke out so that is right for the five and a quarter inch um, drive but unfortunately then that won't fit the three and a half inch drive but what I've got and I had a few of these. these. I've had these from back in the day, back when I used to do computers back in the 90s when I had my little business. Um, th that's an adapter. So basically that will connect in there like that, allow us to plug a uh, three and a half inch drive there and a five and a quarter inch drive there. Now there's no easy... it would take a lot of mucking about to get it so the three and a half inch is A and the five and a quarter is B so I'm going to do it the other way around it doesn't really matter for what we're using this for now so from now on the um, five and a quarter is going to be A before um, after the twist and the three and a half is going to be um, B which will be on the um, straight bit there so that's not going to matter too much but just uh, I just thought I'd mention that um, if we had longer cables and a bigger case we could get it all um, the right way round but we haven't and like I said for what I'm, I'm not going to be booting off the floppy in this or anything um, it will boot from um, CD I'm not sure whether it will boot from um, I'm not 100% sure whether this one will boot from CD I think it might be a bit too old for that so it's a bit of a funny it's basically the BIOS it's even though the computer is reasonably new um, the BIOS is really quite outdated on it and I think it was like that for you know you'll see when we go into the BIOS to set this up anyway it's um, a very old style BIOS it uses let's try and thread this cable where it's going to be we don't want to block any uh, fans or anything because it would be fatal in a, a tiny little case like this you need to be able to get things in as tight as um, and neat as possible. Get the um, flopper cable plugged in. Must be slightly later this one than a very early cable because that, I think you used an edge connector that even went onto the controller card. But it's an older, an older floppy cable this. Let's get you in there. Sorry, you can't see very much because all you can see is my fingers faffing about on the back of here. But there we go. That's plugged down there. So now what we need? Oops, I'm switched it on. Damn. That's probably not. It's not best to have it plugged in, but it's better because um, the case is uh... right. Hopefully, we've got enough room now to feed. We'll disconnect the um, hard drive power and we'll feed this cable up. We've not had to disconnect the power to the um, floppy drive, so that should be right, right for going back in. Right, okay, so pull that power out of the way for now, just to just while we get this um, this cable connected. fold that flap there and then we need to get that to plug in to the back of the floppy drive which it has done 
Right, so that's the three and a half inch floppy drive put through the adapter. And we've got the connector there for the five and a quarter inch um, floppy drive. We'll plug the um, hard drive back in which we had to disconnect before. And hopefully, fingers crossed that this cable here is going to be long enough to get to the power connector on the... Um, Three, uh, five and a quarter inch drive. All right, we'll get the five and a quarter, and we'll slide that, slide that in. It's a bit yellowed, but I'm not worried about that. And we'll stick a couple of screws in to hold it in place. Okay. I'll stick another screw in. Oops. Come on, pick up. Just want to hold it in place for now so it doesn't move. That screw doesn't feel like it's going in very well. Perhaps we'll just stick one other one on the other side just for now. And we can always readdress it. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to stick with this drive in this um, computer or, so, or I'm going to take it out and put a 360 in yet. But just for now. I just want to see whether we can get it um, get it working. At least it'll prove that all my cabling is going to work. Right, okay, so we can plug, hopefully that's just going to reach, it's going to be tight, but I think it's just going to reach. Ooh, yeah, and it is only just. Now, what I should have done, of course, is put the data cable over there first, like that, and then plug the power into the um, drive. Okay. And then that cable can plug into the five and a quarter like that. That's no longer needed, but we'll just keep it. We'll keep it up there for now. We might end up taking that out. Right. So we've got. I won't bother putting the case back on just yet. We want to test it first. Uh, we've got the five and a quarter fitted into the front of the computer. And we'll switch on and see if we get any um, anything awry on the um, thing because if we've got it wrong probably most likely that both lights will light up at once um, it might still do something funny uh, because we haven't set it up in the BIOS yet so anyway let's switch on and we'll get you up on the screen we'll go into the um, BIOS right standard CMOS features and now it's set up the way I had it before, drive A is the 1.4, so we'll swap that and drive A will be the 1.2 and then we've got drive B and drive B will be the 1.4. That should be right. So I mean, if anyone that's worked on computers made in the 90s, it's instantly recognisable this um, BIOS. It's uh, what I used to do. Yeah, I used to know this uh, like the back of my hands. Save and exit setup. Yes. Right. Let's see what's going to happen. Well, I saw the first um, floppy fail 40. Right, so we have got an issue. Um, so we just show that again. I'll reset it. The other thing I like about this case is it's actually got a proper reset on it. Stuff you don't see on computers um, anymore. So we get A is definitely um, recognised as A, but then we get a floppy fail 40, so we're not getting um, the B drive is um, not recognising. Now, could it be that these 
really nasty modern drives are not going to um, behave the way we want. Uh, could it be that this drive's not going to um, work with a, um, a second? I can't see why. I can't see why, but um, there's definitely something not quite right there. Anyway, let's um, F1. Let's get into um, we'll get into Windows, and we'll just quickly see whether that drive's at least readable. And then I'll have to go back in and address it, and we'll see if we can figure out what's gone wrong. Um, and why that drive's not working. Now we've got XP back up. Let's um, my computer. And it's shot. Right, um, well. Go on to um, a quick look at. Oops. We have a quick look at um, this here. I don't know if you can make that out. But basically, it's showing two drives. We've got um, five and a quarter inch A there, and we've got a three and a half inch B, which is the way we've set it up. But for some reason, the BIOS was giving us a um, giving us an error then. One, let's see if we've got a. I've got some five and a quarter inch discs here. And I've got some three and a half. So I'll put a three and a half disc in the three and a half inch drive. And we'll stick a five and a quarter inch disc in the five and a quarter inch drive. And let's see if we can read either of them. So let's try the five and a quarter first. Well, that's working. You can see on the um, and that's red disc five. I mean, I, I don't think I can really run it because it's um, an old MS DOS um, installation disc. It's not really anything we can look at, but it's dirt. It's, you know, it's it's red. It. It's worked. Um, But what about drive B? And that's just going to time out. So we've got an issue with the. Um, please see, please insert disk in drive B. So we've got an issue with that um, B drive. Yes, I know I've got 30 days left for activation. Um, right, I'll just pause the video and I'll just have a quick check of my cables and um, we'll get right back. Okay, we're back and uh, we're all sorted. Um, it was nothing, uh, nothing major. All basically I've had to do is I had to swap the power Molex power connectors between the floppy drive and the hard drive. It was just pulling. Uh, basically, the cable was too taut like that, and it was actually pulling on that little adapter board which I put in between the floppy drive and the floppy cable, and it was just pulling it out a little bit on one side and making it not connect. So anyway, I've rerouted the um, way that the power goes, so um, that cable's the other way around, it goes to the, uh, that first then drops down to the hard drive, that just gave me an extra like few millimetres of cable, which was enough to stop it pressing on that uh, little adapter cable. So if we go over to the uh, monitor now, let's get you zoomed into that, and we um, get my computer up, pick up the right mount the mouse. Um, as we see, we've got a five and a quarter inch floppy drive A and a three and a half inch B. We um, go to A. That loads. That's the five and a quarter inch drive loading. If we go to um, B, now I've got a disc in here, but there's nothing on it. It's just a blank disc. But the disc loads. In fact, what we can do if we go back, we'll go to B. We'll go to format. And it's a um, well. That's something we're going to have to um, look at. It's currently only set up to um, for about a 1.44 meg disk. I think you can get something to um, allow XP to do um, 720k disks. But the other software, anyway, the other software that I've got um, can format to other um, other formats. So that's not really a major um, a major problem. 
don't think we've got any 1.44 meg discs in here to uh, demo it but we can we can see that the drive works um, and more importantly we've now got the five and a quarter inch um, drive working as well as I've said I don't know whether I'm going to stick with that um, five and a quarter inch um, drive that we've just prepared well we've just serviced in here or whether I'm going to um, actually swap it out for um, a 360k version being that we can do that um, with the BIOS that we've got on this computer so we do have the option of um, swapping if it does prove to be problematic writing um, double density discs with it um, I might swap it out for the 360k uh, drive I've got and put that one in my 486 which is a bit more like period period issue um, correct this doesn't matter period wise um, it's a bit sir I mean I've got um, the Ovetti keyboard that came with that 286 I'm using that I'm using a uh, serial Microsoft scroll mouse Another really nice thing about this computer is it actually has ser a proper serial port on board um, I think it's got two actually only ones um, out at the moment. I also think it's got parallel again it's not on the back but I think it's got it on the board so I could use a little parallel cable and put a parallel port on the back of it which could be very useful for other things for connecting up to like um, Commodore and Atari disk drives and um, stuff like that uh, which I very well, way, very well may do actually I might actually put a parallel port on uh, the back of this thing and then I can um, connect a um, Atari or a Commodore 64 um, disk drive with various little interfaces you can buy and build for um, doing that so I can um, read and write stuff off them formats anyway I'm going to leave this um, there for now so it was literally just a bit of a look at um, getting that um, old 1.2 meg floppy drive um, up and running it does seem to though it's come up with after just a basically um, a bit of a clean that's all it needed um, and getting this computer up and running showing you roughly the specs of it and why this computer is so good as uh, like I said um, a bridge computer between some of my really old stuff well, I mean, it's buried this um, it's all buried at the moment but um, we we'll spin the um, camera around you know we've got the um, where is it now that's um, BBC related stuff there we've got the um, 380Z down there Oops, there. It's the CPM machine, so we can use basically use that PC that we've built to write CPM discs that we can then use on uh, that. Also, we've got the um, where is he? I the um, IBM 5150 there, um, which is a, basically the first PC. Um, that just has the two five and a quarter inch drives in it. Uh, it's really handy having the five and a quarter inch there. In fact, that might be one of the first tries that we do. That computer's not been switched on in a very, 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 very long time. I bought that back in the um, late 90s for a car, from a um, car boot sale, and um, it's been in storage ever since. I literally just have it as a display item, but um, I suppose at some point we should try and get that up and um, that one up and running um, I can see Tintelium capacitors going pop and all sorts because it's not been switched on in um, many 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 years but um, and the monitor uh, the correct monitor I've got I've got uh, the correct keyboard for it a Model M keyboard I think it's an M um, I've got the correct monitor for it uh, the monitor I've never ever tried that came in a job lot uh, a couple of years ago uh, I basically bought the entire job lot to get a couple of uh, to get that monitor and uh, that Acorn monitor there which uh, matches my um, Acorn A7000 um, but yeah um, now we've got this computer up and um, up and running we can um, actually get discs easily wrote for uh, working on some of this older stuff Anyway, I'm going to leave that there for now. I hope you enjoyed this little ramble. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.